Chapman to us live from Indianapolis side of the final four. We are going to take you out live now to Chapel Hill. Roy Williams about to address the media as he announces his retirement today. This is Bubba Cunningham, the athletic director at North Carolina, getting ready to introduce Roy Williams. And all you have done for Carolina. Thank you very much, coach. This morning when I talked to the team, it was really difficult. We did a Zoom call as long as I have enough people around me to know how to do those things. And that was really, really difficult. And when I came in and I saw the former players in the lounge, that was really difficult. And then when I realized that I was going to walk through that tunnel for the last time, as a coach, that was really difficult. So we need to have some humor because I'm going to need it. <laughs> and so the chancellor, I worry about you, chancellor, because intellectually you and I are about the same spot and that worries the hell out of me. Because <laughs> now I was going to say it was, it's now a good time to say April's fool and say gotcha and get the crap out of here. <laughs> but the chancellor got me, got it first. These are different times and unusual ways to say things. Uh, first time I spoke at my high school graduations commencement exercises, I wrote it out. When I spoke at my mom's and my dad's funeral, I wrote it out. And in 2007, when I was lucky enough, because a lot of those guys back up there, when I was inducted in the Hall of Fame, I wrote it out. And the reason I did that is because I think I've got a better chance of uh, holding it together. I really need Mickey Bell and Coach Smith here because at the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies in 2007, Coach Smith slid over to me and he said, eh, I've got a $10 bet with Mickey that he thinks you're going to crack up and start crying. I said, Coach, you're in good hands. But if I read it as opposed to just talking off the cuff, I do have a better chance. But these are different times, unusual th ways to say things. In today's time, excuse me, in today's times, I should say that I'm not retiring or resigning. I'm opting out. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous phrase I've ever heard in my life. Why the hell don't you just say I quit? Uh, so I'm old school and I can't use those words, but I will tell you that I'm retiring and resigning as a men's basketball coach at North Carolina. It's been a thrill. It has been unbelievable. I've loved it. It's coaching. And that's all I've ever wanted to do since the summer after my ninth grade year in high school. No one has ever enjoyed coaching like I have for 48 years. As a high school coach for five years, came back here as Coach Smith's assistant for 10, head coach at Kansas for 15, and now North Carolina for 18. Everybody wants to know the reason, and the reason is very simple. Every time somebody asked me how long I was gonna go, I would always say, as long as my health allows me to do it. But deep down inside, I knew that the only thing that would speed that up if I did not feel that I was any longer the right man for the job. I'm not going to say the best man because I never thought I was the best at anything. But 15 years at Kansas, I thought I was the right man. And this time at North Carolina, I thought I was the right man. I no longer feel that I am the right man for the job. The last six years have been really good. In 2016, we won the regular season and won the conference tournament championship. And we played for the national championship. Marcus Page made the most unbelievable shot that I've ever seen to send it into overtime. And if we had gotten it into overtime, I think we would have won, but you have to congratulate Villanova. Chris Jenkins comes down and making that big time shot. But we were one of the best and it was a great game, but we were almost there. In 2017, we made it to the last game again. And we were fortunate enough to win. 
Kennedy Meeks, Isaiah Hicks, Justin and Theo and Joel and Nick, Nate and all those guys. That time in the locker room reminded me because I was an assistant in 82. I was in there in 05 and 09 and now in 17. And every year that I was in there after winning a national championship, the first time as Coach Smith's assistant, somebody would say, gosh, I wish I were on Franklin Street. And I would laugh, and every time I said, including 82, when I had black hair, that Franklin Street may be pretty good, but nothing's better in this locker room. And that's the way I felt in 17. We were number one seed that year, and in 18, it was really a great deal of fun with Theo and Joel. We were number two seed. And in 19, we were number one seed again. Kenny Williams is back over there. I told him somewhere down the line, we're related. I have a picture on my desk when we lost, when we ran into the really hot Auburn team that I took Kenny out and I knew the game was over and I kissed him on the top of the head and it's one of my favorite pictures. But we were pretty good and uh, Kenny and Luke, Cam and Kobe, Garrison, that was so much fun. But the last two years have been really hard. 2020, we had so many injuries, yes. It was uh, this year before we get into the tournament, I, the ACC tournament, I saw that uh, box score from we played Virginia Tech at Virginia Tech during that season. We only played seven guys. We didn't have Brandon Robinson, didn't have Cole Anthony, and uh, we lost in double overtime. The injuries really did hurt, but I, I felt that I made mistakes. We were up three against Clemson, and I didn't remind the guys to foul. They make a three and send it to overtime, and we lost. Up three against Duke, and we did foul. And young man from Duke did one of the greatest things I've ever seen, bouncing that ball off the front of the rim and making that basket. But that time I fouled, and it didn't work out either, and we lost in overtime. Wanda's maiden name is Jones, and I told the Jones youngster, Trey and Tyus both were great players at Duke, but I'd never seen anything like that. We had six games last year that were decided on last second shots. We all, we lost all six of those. My first year as Coach Smith's assistant, we had five games where the other team had the last shot that would have won the game. And they missed all five. That was the difference between me and Coach Smith. We talk, I talked to him about that several years later. Needless to say, I didn't talk to him after last season, even though I talked to him every night. But uh, no one could emphasize rebounding any more than Roy Williams. And we didn't get a box out, and we lost the Notre Dame game on the second shot. Didn't get a box out twice and lost the Duke game. So when those six games were decided on last second shots and we lost all of those, it uh, sort of ate at me all summer. And we beat Syracuse on the road late in the ACC and the next week lost to them in the ACC tournament. And they just had more fire and more passion and I didn't get my kids to that level. It's funny and humorous and comical, but so many times over my career, I've had fans say, Coach, if you can just beat Duke twice, we don't care about anything else. I don't know if they're going to say that right now because we did beat Duke twice, but uh, we still didn't get done what I wanted to do. I just never got the team this year where I wanted them to go. I just didn't get it done. I didn't get them to buy in and focus on the things that I think are really bitter, big in the game of basketball. We got better all season long. I think we got better, but not to the level some of our teams have been. I didn't push the right buttons. We did 
some good things. We did some things that sometimes, as I said, the locker room at Duke, the Duke game here, Louisville here, Florida State here, Notre Dame in the tournament. I just didn't get it done consistently enough. So yes, I'm getting old, body's breaking down mentally and physically. But I do love teasing my players and said, I just wonder what you're going to look like when you're 70. Yes, I want to see my children and grandchildren more. I want to give Wanda more time. I still don't know about getting in an RV and driving across the United States of America, though. I'm all in for going to baseball parks with the grandkids. But the biggest reason we're having this meeting is I just don't feel that I'm the right man any longer. I love coaching, working with kids on the court, the locker room, the trips, the jump around music, the trying to build a team. I will always love that, and I'm scared to death of the next phase, but I no longer feel that I'm the right man. What I'd like to do is bore you to death for a couple more seconds and thank some people. Uh, Buddy Baldwin was my high school coach. He's the person that made me want to be a coach. My experience with him was really the most important thing as a youngster. I never would have gone to college if it hadn't been for Coach Baldwin. And I love the fact that he was a UNC graduate and he wanted me to come here. The players, players from Kansas, players from North Carolina, players from Owen High School, I've heard from all of them today. One of the first ones I got was a young man who's a minister who was a football player at Owen High School, my first year as a high school coach. Telling my team that, talking to them this morning, is the most difficult thing I've done. I've been so lucky because of those guys. I've been so lucky. 15 years at Kansas, those kids gave me a chance. They said, let's do what he says and see if it'll work out. They didn't question me. We grew up together and I appreciated how hard they worked and the passion with which they played. Jerry Green told me at that time, he said, you're getting those kids to pull the nails out of the floor for you. And I always remembered that and I felt like that that's part of the problem that I failed in the last two years. Now 18 years at UNC and you're darn right. I'm as happy as I can be about those individual banners up there of the players that I coached, including Tyler Hansborough on the front row. That's pretty impressive. All those guys that uh, helped us put those three banners behind us. I'm so proud that I can say in the 18 years we've been back, we're the only school to win three. You know, I never had a player that wanted to miss a shot. I never had a player that wanted to make a bad play. I always pushed them to concentrate, hustle, and get better every day. And my players these last two years, they did, they're not any different. They didn't want to miss a shot. They didn't want to miss a box out. I didn't get the message to them well enough. Some of you people have been around here a long time and you see that play hard, play smart, play together. Some of the older guys that played here when I was assistant, that's the last thing I yelled in the locker room when they'd leave the locker room every night. We'd get and clap our hands together and they would leave and yell, play hard, play smart. Bill Guthridge was always teasing me. He said, how do you want them to play? And I said it every game for the last eight years I was assisted here. Coach Smith, being Coach Smith, would say, eh, I think it should be play hard, play smartly. I told him I was going to stick with the play hard. My second and third year at Kansas, second or third year, Coach Smith called me and said, we've added one thing to your play hard, play smart, and we've added play together. And that was one of the most proud 
moments I've ever had. Again, I've been so lucky because of those players. And nothing is better than seeing the look on your guys' faces when they accomplished something that was really hard. I love those locker room celebrations. And yes, a lot of people realized that I couldn't dance worth a darn. But I didn't care. I just wanted to jump around and act like a fool. So to the players that are here, the ones that have already sent messages, that have already called me, and the ones that haven't, I loved every one of you, and thank you. Bob Frederick, Brad's father, took a chance and hired me at Kansas. And Chancellor Jean Beauty allowed him to do it. Bob Frederick was the finest gentleman I've ever known in my life. And I was really happy that he was able to see two of our national championships at North Carolina before he passed. Dickie Bedour is one of the most impressive people I've ever known. When I said no in 2000, he caught a lot of junk. He was criticized a great deal and people blamed him. And three years later, he called again and asked if I would come back again. And all of us know that a lot of people wouldn't have done that. Chancellor Meeser allowed him to do that and I appreciate Dickie and Chancellor Meeser more than they will ever know. And Bubba now and Chancellor Guskowitz are two people that uh, have been hard to talk to them over the last seven or eight, nine days. But I love Chancellor Guskowitz started here as a freaking trainer. <laughs> and he's in the same ballpark as I am about how much he loves this university. And I appreciate that about him. I appreciate the fact that he asked me on Sunday if I'd take 24 more hours to think about it. And Bubba, we've grown together and trust him a great deal. I'm putting a lot of load on him and the Chancellor's shoulders because I'm giving my opinion very strongly about what I want to happen with the program. But Bubba and the Chancellor, I thank you guys. And thanks to my coaches, my first staff at KU, wow. Jerry Green, Steve Robinson, Kevin Stallings, Mark Turgeon. That was my staff. All four of those guys were coach of the year in their respective leagues and some of it multiple times. And then I had Matt Darty, and then Joe Holiday. And Joe Holiday stayed with me for 20 years. And that was still the North Carolina lineage because Joe was Steve Hale's high school coach and he worked at our basketball camp here and I just loved who Joe Holiday was. Thanks, partner. Ben Miller, Neil Darty, Jared Hass, C.B. McGrath, Hubert Davis, Brad Frederick, Sean May, Kendall Marshall, Eric Coops. No one has had that quality and level of help and care and love that you guys have given me. After I hired Jared and CB, I made the decision I would never hire anybody as an assistant coach unless they had played for me. That's how strong Jared and CB were. <coughs> when I think of Eric Coots, I think of somebody can do everything. And when I think of Eric Coots and Hubert Davis together, I think they're the only two people that can love this university as much as I do. And Steve Robinson, 26 years as a security blanket and as a brother. And words cannot say what I feel about Steve. The administrative assistants, because that's what they tell me to call them as opposed to secretary. Some of them tell me much more strongly than others. At Kansas, Suzanne, Debbie, and Joni. And here at North Carolina, Jen Holbrook and the current staff, Nadia, Synthony, Kay, and Maggie. Cynthia didn't come in today, but I think they got her the information. But they took care of Roy Williams, but they also took care of Carolina basketball. I don't know what to call these other people. 
except say thank you. Steve Kirshner, Clint Gwaltney, Doug Halverson, Jonas Thracia. Those four guys are absolutely incredible and work so hard to take care of many things, especially me. There's no way we would have had the success that we've had without those guys. I'd like to thank the other coaches here at North Carolina. I love coaches. And you realize that in North Carolina, we have nine coaches, have had nine coaches who have won national championships. I love that. I do I love coaches. Some people portray coaches in a manner I never see. We all got into coaching because we loved our game, wanted to teach and wanted to help young men develop or young women develop, not for the money. We did it because someone helped us and we wanted to help others. I came back to North Carolina for $2,700 a year and I sold calendars and drove copies of Dick Crump's football show and Coach Smith's basketball show. And a lot of the coaches around the country do it, did it the same way. So many, I can't say them all, but I truly admire and respect and lucky to call them friends. Tubby Smith, Lon Kruger, Tom Izzo, Mark Few, yes, Bob Huggins. I always say that he's a little unusual, but I love him to death. Jared Hass, Mark Turgeon. In our own league, Mike Krzyzewski and Jimmy Boeheim already in the Hall of Fame, and they made me work as hard as I could every day. And Leonard Hamilton, who needs to be in our Hall of Fame. Younger guys like Josh Pastner, Chris Mack, and Tony Bennett. Oh my gosh, what a coach Tony Bennett is. I've been lucky because those guys push me. I've also been lucky because old guys like Nolan Richardson and Bob Knight helped me immensely when I was a young coach. And some we've lost, like Coach John Chaney, who would always hug me. And Coach John Thompson, who was one of my mentors. And yes, Dean Smith, Bill Guthridge, and Eddie Folkler, who taught me everything, everything I know. Coach Smith, I've always said, was the best there ever was on the court and was even better off it. I could never come close to matching what Coach Smith did. But every day I tried to make him proud. Bill Guthridge was my freshman coach. I wasn't very good, but I loved to practice, loved to play. And Eddie Fogler took me under his arm when I was a part-time assistant and taught me everything that I could possibly need about recruiting. Those guys were really something, and every day, I hope all three of them felt like I was doing what they wanted me to do. I'd like to thank the former players, a different group, Bob McAdoo, Jeff Lebo, Kenny Smith, Don Johnston, and Greg Campbell, because they wanted me to coach their sons. That really says to me what they thought. The good news I have for you is that, believe it or not, I'm just about done. I never had any day that I didn't give my absolute best. Not one single day. I cared deeply for my school. I cared deeply for every player. And I'm really proud of what we accomplished. If I can get through this period here, I'm gonna to try to put aside the fact that I no longer feel like I'm the right person and try to concentrate on the fact that uh, I'm really proud of what we accomplished. The last long period of time, I've been focused on the fact that I just didn't think I was good enough anymore. But if I can get through today, I'm gonna focus on that we had some fun. My family allowed me to coach and believed it was the best thing for me to do. They encouraged, supported me, cheered and cried. They cared about what I was doing passionately. Wanda, Scott, Kimberly, Katie, Kurt, Aiden, Court, Kaysen, and little Miss Kenzie. I love you. Wanda is the 
best partner I could have ever had for 48 years. Most of the time I kid around and say that I've allowed that woman to live with me for 48 years. It'll be 48 years this July 28th. She was the best partner I could ever have had. I don't know what the future holds. In some ways, I'm very sad, and as I said, I'm scared. But I'm also really happy and proud. We did okay. I was coaching great youngsters, winning a few games, and loving it with my heart and my soul. We did okay. And to borrow from Lou Gehrig, I'm a big time Yankees fan. And it's nice to see Art Chansky back there with how the Red Sox have been struggling. Lou Gehrig said, and I say again, I feel like I'm the luckiest man on this earth. Thank you. Well, that was that was different. Um, kind of feel bad for him. Seems like he still wants to coach, but just said several times he doesn't feel like the right man for the job, doesn't think he's good enough anymore. Uh, Roy Williams, at his best, was one of the best of all time, second most NCAA tournament wins all time behind Coach K, who's several years older than Roy Williams and a while ago passing his mentor, Dean Smith, who he coached alongside uh, for 10 years, late 70s into the late 80s. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.